Welcome back to a complete beginner's tutorial for Ubuntu. Let's get you acquainted with the Ubuntu desktop. Alright, welcome back. We're picking up from part one in this video series. If you haven't uh, seen part one and you need to go back to installing Ubuntu, go ahead and uh, click on the link up here at the top right and uh, that will direct you to uh, part one in this series. For those of us uh, tuning back in, welcome back, and we're going to be looking at the default Ubuntu desktop. So immediately after you install Ubuntu and reboot, you're going to be greeted to this screen here. So this is your welcome screen, and you're going to have a chance to set up your online accounts. Now this is beneficial for a few different reasons. You can use the Ubuntu single sign-on login. If you have an Ubuntu One account, this will allow you to write reviews in the software center for certain apps that you download, uh, among other smaller things. So that's helpful to sign in. You could left click that and put in your email address and your password and then click connect. And of course there's our famous uh, eye in the sky, our search friend extraordinaire Google. You can uh, log into your Google account and uh, you're going to see this a lot, and I need to preface this real quick. You're going to see the words GNOME, and you're going to see this little foot here. Now what this is, is this is the actual desktop interface that you're using. Ubuntu uses by default the GNOME desktop. And that's this whole interface that you're looking at here. Everything here is designed by the GNOME community with a few modifications made by Ubuntu. So. If there's ever any confusion, if you see that word GNOME, it's because some application is recognizing the desktop interface that you're using. Sometimes you'll see it say Ubuntu, sometimes you'll see it say GNOME. It just depends on what web service or app or account is reading it. So just needed to preface that there. That being said, you can click your email, uh, you can input your email address and then log in by clicking next and that will log you in. What that'll do is if you are like using the file browser and you want access to your Google Cloud, your cloud accounts, that will show up right here on the left side of the file manager after you set up your Google account. There's a few other benefits to that. Your email address would instantly be set up with some uh, email clients and, uh, and some other benefits. So that's really the reason why you want your online account set up if you want to enjoy those benefits. I'm going to click on skip and the final part of this welcome window is that you can report uh, your, your system information to Ubuntu which basically gives them your hardware specs, your graphics card, the CPU, the amount of RAM, the technical setup of your PC and what that does is that allows them to see what kinds of computers users are putting Ubuntu on that allows them to check for certain hardware compatibility and try to improve it on the popularized hardware devices they see that are being reported uh, that Ubuntu is being installed on. Completely optional, again, you can send the information if you desire, or if you don't, you don't have to. There's no obligation to do that. You can click Next. Oh, I'm sorry, the last, last, the last, last window. The last window is uh, a privacy window. If you want to enable location services for a couple of the GNOME apps, you can do that. One of the great things about Linux is it's all about privacy. It is about respecting your privacy as an individual. If this is turned off, that feature is disabled and you won't have to worry about, uh, in general, any backdoor people like Big Brother 1984 sneaking up behind you. Uh, so if you, if you want to have the benefits of the location services enabled, you can left click there. Otherwise, you can leave it off and click Next. And then you're done. So they say you're ready to go, uh, and now you can use software to install apps like these and show some popular software applications. But we're not going to dive into that just yet. We're going to click on Done, and you're greeted to the desktop. Yay, you made it. <laughs> it's an exciting new world up ahead. So I've already taken the liberty of changing the wallpaper because I'm a fan of cyberpunk. It's my favorite fashion and style genre. I am a child of the 90s and I loved the emerging uh, style that came from that. So let's get you familiar with the Ubuntu desktop. By default, you're going to see that this is a fairly simple design. You have your, 
your desktop with your desktop icons here at the top and they behave very similar to Windows so that's the first part I'm going to look at here is that you can right click on these icons you can left click and hold to move them Uh, you can right click the open area, any open area in the desktop and you'll see a context menu come up with a couple of different configuration options. Change the display settings, open up the settings manager, you can change the background, uh, create new folders, give new folder a name, and there it is. You can double click to open them up in the file manager. So a pretty familiar behavior that you should be used to if you've been using Windows or Mac OS. So that stuff should be familiar. Now I'm going to go into some of the new concepts here. So right over here you're going to see the dash or the dock. And this is going to be your Windows switcher. If you open up a web browser and you open up a file browser, they're going to appear in the left dock over here. And you'll know that they're running because there's an orange counter that is enabled here. You can right click on this also and you can open up new windows and you'll see that counter now shows two showing that there are two web browsers running right now. You can right click and switch between them if you want to by selecting all windows over here. Uh, you can remove them from favorites or you could quit both windows. If you want to manage one of these applications in the dock, say you want to move a favorites to a different location. You simply left click and drag. You simply choose the desired location on the dock and then let go. And it relocates it. You can do this for as many apps as you want. If you want to add an app to the dock as a favorite, you can go into show applications. Let's say you want to use the software updater. You can right click on the app and left click add to favorites. And you can see now it says software updater has been added to your favorites. Or if you want to left click and drag the icon over to the dock, you can see it will also now add it as one of the favorites. You can also do this when searching for applications. You can also do this when searching for applications. So if I want to make the image viewer a favorite, while searching I can either right click on it and set add to favorites, or I can left click and drag to the left edge of the screen and position it in the favorite location where I want on the dock. And there you go. If I want to remove objects as favorites, I can right click and simply select remove from favorites. At the bottom of the dock, you're going to see a Show Applications button. So this is going to be where you get your apps, like in your Start menu on Windows. So when you click on Show Applications, you're going to see an application grid appear. And this is going to show your applications that are installed on Ubuntu. Right now, this is the default set of apps that are installed. You can use, and anywhere in the empty space, uh, you can scroll up and scroll down to sort through the applications. And then to open them, you simply left click and it opens it up. Now going back in, you're going to see that there are two subcategories, if you will. There are the all apps, which is every single app that you have installed. Uh, and then there are the frequent apps. So the, these are the ones that you use most frequently and they're going to appear in this section here. That way, if you don't want to scroll through all of these, let's say you have you know, a large list of programs installed on here and as opposed to scrolling through them, you just want to see the ones that you're using most often. Well, you'll find those in the frequent section right here. So that's the applications menu. Now I'm going to get into the main part that users have to get most familiar with with the GNOME desktop, which is the activities button. So this activities button, when you left click it, it will enable the activities overview. Now I'm going to run some uh, programs right here. I'm going to open up a web browser, a file browser, the music player, and a text editor. And I'm going to click on the activities up here at the top left. And as you can see, it starts to spread the windows and arrange them in a way that you can see everything easily. 
This is another way that you can manage your windows and you can select between the windows instead of using the dock here on the left. Pressing the super key or the windows key will also enable and disable this activities overview screen. So straight from your keyboard, you can press the super key and it will enable this activities overview so you can quickly switch between windows without having to move your mouse over to the left side of the screen, if that's your preference. From there, left clicking the application will bring it to the forefront and make it your active window. You'll also know your active window because of the text that is showing up right here at the top on the top bar, right next to activities. Right now it's showing that the music player rhythm box is active, but when I switch over to my files application by left clicking it here, you'll see that files is now the active program. So also a helpful way to see if you for some reason don't know which, uh, which program is the active one that you're using, you'll know by this area right here. I'm pressing the super key to go back into the overview. There's a couple of other big things in the overview. One of the biggest things that makes Ubuntu very handy and easy to use is this search bar up here. So this search bar is a universal search bar. You can use this to search for applications. You can use it to search for documents. When you have other GNOME applications installed like a calendar or photos or documents uh, or your to-do list or weather, uh, even their own web browser, you can search darn near anything from here. This becomes very handy when you're trying to access things quickly using your keyboard. So by pressing the super key, and if I wanted to, uh, I'm going to close out on all of these here. Now the default web browser, his name is Firefox. So if I wanted to press the super key and from my keyboard type in F I R E, you'll see that the menu entry becomes available and I can simply press the enter key and it now opens up a web browser window. Pressing the super key again, if I wanted to look at my system settings, type in SET, you'll know it's highlighted by the opaque gray border that's around it and that means it's the active uh, selection. So by pressing enter, I enter the settings application. So the search feature becomes very handy if you're doing something as simple as even looking for network settings. So you'll notice it's not only searching for applications, but it is searching within the settings program itself for things that are related to the word network. So things like network or Wi-Fi or privacy, which probably has to, which has to do with internet privacy. You'll also see that it's searching the Ubuntu Software Center for any new applications that you can install that are related to the word network. You can fully navigate through this entire overview menu with both your keyboard and your mouse. So if I wanted to go down and access one of the Ubuntu software programs to install, I can use the down arrow on my keyboard and you'll see the menu entry following my keyboard movements. So pressing the up and down arrow key as well as left and right allow me to navigate freely throughout this overview menu. Pressing the escape key clears the search field and brings you back to the activities overview. So a very handy feature, a lot of different search things you can try and search for. The only other thing I'm going to show you for the activities overview is to the right here. And th this is your workspace switcher. So the concept behind workspaces is this. Imagine that you have a desk and you're on your desk, you let's say you have a work desk and on your work desk you have your work projects, but let's say in the same room you have another desk. And on that desk, let's say you like to keep your work and personal life separate. So maybe you've got work on one desk and you have your, uh, maybe you're doing some art and you're drawing some art on another desk. And you just like to reserve that desk and have all of your colored pencils or your pencils, your, your paints, your artist equipment. And you're using that desk for that sole purpose. Well, in Linux, you can do the same thing. So if, for example, if I enter the activities overview 
if I'm maybe using this particular workspace here for my work stuff, if I have a web browser open and I'm looking at work uh, things and I'm accessing some business documents and I'm doing business work and I wanna keep that here, but let's say I wanna switch over and do some gaming. Well, I can enter the activities overview and move my mouse over to the far right edge of the screen here and you'll see now because I have these windows open a new square or a new workspace has become available left clicking that brings me to a whole new workspace and from there I can open a whole new set of windows say maybe the Ubuntu Software Center and I can look for some games to install so while I'm looking for games, if I want to go back to my work activities, then I left click this workspace up here and I'm back to where I started. So it's a handy way to be able to organize your applications within a single desktop. Within the desktop are multiple workspaces and that allows you to switch between them. You can also scroll up and down with your middle scroll wheel on your mouse and that will switch between workspaces as well when, you're, when your mouse is in this area. So scrolling up and down here switches the workspaces as well as over here. You can also uh, move windows from one workspace to the other. You can left click and drag this here, like say this file browser, and bring it over into this workspace. So now it's been relocated to here. And if you wanted to move the software center up to here, and even if you wanted to move it straight from this workspace right up here, you can left click and drag. You can move it over to this one, or over to another one, or even in between them to create a new workspace if you wanted. So you can see this is a very versatile feature of the desktop and it allows you to organize your active windows so that you can keep different sets of tasks separate from each other and make it easier for you to organize your uh, daily activities. So that's the benefits of the workspace switcher over here. The only other parts I'm going to go into on the desktop are going to be these last two areas up here. You're going to see uh, the top here is going to display the date and the time and left clicking that will open up a calendar as well as your notifications. So notifications are going to appear up in the top middle area of the desktop here in Ubuntu. So if something happens, let's say, let's say if I'm for the brief sake of demonstration, I'll get more into this in a separate video, but if I wanted to install uh, a game here and let's say I wanted to install SuperTux. I click on the install button and I type in my password and it begins the install process. Once this is done installing you're going to see a notification appear up here at the top and let's say I'm, I move on to something else. If I go to a uh, if I go to a different workspace for example and I'm doing something else say I'm browsing files and oh look SuperTux is now installed. Application is ready to be used. So you see these notifications appear up at the top and sometimes it'll give you an option like you can launch it or depending on what the notification is regarding you can perform different actions for that notification. Moving your mouse away from it will simply dismiss it. It'll disappear or if you left click the notification it will bring you to the application responsible for sending you that notification. So that's going to show you how to use your notifications in Ubuntu. Uh, usually notifications that you haven't interacted with will show up here on the list and then you'll be able to select them and perform whatever action that you want from there. The final part in this video is going to be the top right here which is kind of your system utility menu. So this is going to give you a couple of different options. It's going to give you the volume to adjust. Uh, you can also manage your networking up from up here and you can go into your network settings. This is where if you have a Wi-Fi adapter you would choose your Wi-Fi router to connect to. As well as managing your user settings you can log out 
and access your account settings from here. And then you have these three buttons down here, this one being to shut down the computer, to lock the screen, and to enter your system settings right here. Pressing the power button will give you a couple of options. It'll give you a chance to power off, to restart, or to cancel. And there you go. Before you move on to the next video about files and folders, I'd appreciate it if you give this video a like, and then go ahead and move on to the next one. We'll see you there.